Never in Love will be streamed uh, later on tonight. Uh, we are listening to the brand new Velvet Code, uh, Teenage Dreamland, which just came out today, and Velvet Code's going to be joining us in a, a few seconds, um, and we're going to chat about this song. But we are definitely aware that Never in Love by one Alex Zone is out today. Uh, Alex is currently on the takeover with the Q Review and uh, is, is doing a fantastic job. Yeah, it is, right? This, you, if you haven't seen, first of all, the song is, is great. And this is just a radio edit uh, that I'm playing right now. There isn't a, a longer version of it. Uh, but if you haven't seen, there's Bell right now. Uh, if you haven't seen the video, uh, we're going to talk a bit about that, but if you haven't seen the video... You need to go see the video, because it was done in quarantine at home, and I have so many questions about the video and how it kind of came out. Hello! <laughs> Hello! <laughs> <laughs> we, we are currently listening to your new, your new song that just came out today, Teenage Dreamer. Awesome. Awesome. <laughs> I will. Yeah, I'm super excited. I'll turn this down a bit so that we can chat clearly. Yes. Uh, this is, welcome. This is our first time ever actually kind of chatting. It's, it's I know. Exciting. I know. It's really it's really great to meet you, and uh, thanks for having me. Hey, listen. Um, I'm always on the hunt and always on the march, trying to find our Canadian artists that are out there um, who should be getting more like way more uh exposure i hate that word but you know visibility oh. there should be way more representation um in the country so i'm always on the hunt so uh yeah. i'm happy to 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 find you or not find you but uh to kind of have you on here and chat awesome. the song is a smasher uh <laughs> you Thank i mean you. you've been you've been doing edm and electronica and dance for quite some time yeah. Um, you're, you're not new to it. You're kind of well-versed in it. And it's one of those scenes. I'm not very familiar and I'll fully disclose that. I'm yeah. not very familiar with that scene of music. I know songs, I know sounds, I know different artists, but it's such a different world, um, that you're creating in. Uh, yeah. how did, where, okay, so. Let me let me jump back for a second. Uh, where did the song come from? Uh, out of and and you know how long has it been sitting in your back pocket for, and you've been working on it? Yeah. Um, so you know, traditionally, I've I've, I've done I, I write sad dance songs. A lot of the stuff I've released has been sad, melancholy, and and I thought, well, I wrote this song. I I, I wrote the lyrics and melody to the song. Um, Quite a while ago and wanted to pull this out and, and pull it out of the out of the closet so to speak <laughs> and and um and just kind of redo it and make it a little bit more current because to be honest with what we're struggling through right now what you know the last thing people need I, in my opinion i i don't i don't want to tell people what they need but in my opinion what the world needs is more uplifting and hopeful music and this is really just a song about dreaming uh, about a better a life, about, you know, reaching a dream of that you have, um, you know, just, you know, things getting better. And it's for anybody better. who's just joining us right now, what we're this is Velvet Code, uh, and we are talking about his current single, Teenage Dreamer, which just came out today. Um, you're, okay, not only are you sonically creative, but you are a visual, you're a very visual artist. Um, everything that seems to go into your releases is, I, I call it like flavor punch, um, because it's, it's punchy for the ears, it's punchy for the eyes and, and for the, just for the senses in general, um, it gets yeah. you up moving. Um, that being said, where does that come from? I guess, and I, you kind of mentioned it, but like, where, where does all of that come from? You know, it's, I have never heard somebody say that to me, and I'm so thankful that people see it that way. Like, because I'm starting, like, I, I never thought I was visual at all. I always had people, you know, do all my artwork and in the past and, and, and like years ago. And then, especially during this pandemic, I'm like, you know what? I'm just going to buckle down and try and do this myself because my dad was a visual artist and I just kept, you know, he passed away a few years ago. 
And I, I just, I hear him the whispering in my ear, you've got it, you've got, you've got those skills, so why don't you try to do it yourself? So I, I spent, I've been spending this time really trying to figure out um, how to create really interesting visuals, not just in the art, in the artwork, but in the, in the video that I released um, with the help of a really talented uh, <laughs> director, James Forrester. That video, um, and I mean, it, it's, it's one thing to make a video like that when you have access to everyone and everything and studios yeah. and people and stuff like that, but when you don't have access to it yeah. and you create a video like that, yeah, you're, a bit, you're like, yeah. I, I was just like, wow, from, yeah. from your album covers and from, you know, just the aesthetic that you use. And then you see that, that video. And for anybody who hasn't seen it, you got to go watch the video because the video is, it's, it's a trip. Um, it's like a psychedelic, kind, like I said, it's like a flavor punch, right? Um, and it's funny that you, that you said that, you know, that about you, maybe, you know, that people not seeing you as a visual artist. I totally, I've, I've always, ever since I first kind of came across you, always thought you were a visual artist. Yeah. Um, because you. it's kind of, and just to use Teenage Dreamer as an example, and I mean, pandemic is, is, you know, probably helped a bit for having the time and, and that kind of thing to think, but it really is kind of like a 360 view of the song because um, you yourself are visual like in your in your aesthetic in your own personal sense mm -hmm. um, your music I say it's visual even though auditorially it brings visuals to mind to me um, and then that video is just kind <laughs> of crazy and my favorite part and was the part that I clipped to to kind of push out was when you sit down and it all kind of goes the, the gold and, and <laughs> just the lights yeah. around that's my favorite part when you just yeah. kind of basically plunk yourself yeah. Um, <laughs> what, what talk me through how does someone create something like that because I wouldn't know where to start to create something yeah. like that um, in terms of just unfolding all of that Jolly Rancher worth of, of color. <laughs> I know where you're getting that from, from the, the second half of the video where it, turn, it actually looks like a bunch of Jolly Ranchers. I it just goes it. crazy. Yeah, yeah. Um, I started do so I, I, I do this weekly live stream, um, a, a DJ stream, um, and I started experimenting with uh, motion graphics in the background. And I, I have a green screen. It's literally right here in my studio, in my apartment studio, right in my home studio. And I just, I got a green screen and I just started to experiment with the backgrounds because I'm like, do I really want, like, I don't think the way to go is to just invest in all these lights that are just going to sit around my apartment all the time, right? Maybe if I'm going to have, you know, disco parties, but, but nobody's having disco parties right now. So I just thought I'm going to get a green screen and experiment with some backgrounds. And it, 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 every week I would do something different and then I would add a, a new character into it with unicorns. And so I figured out how all that worked. And then I thought, well, I can shoot a, I, I, I wanted to shoot a video for this song because this song was, you know, um, you know, we, I finished it in April and then I, I wanted to, well, I totally completely finished it in April and then wanted to release it. Um, you know, I said, I'm, I've got a couple of months to release it. So I should do a video, a, a quarantine video. So. So I just started experimenting with a few things, and I, you know, I, I luckily I have a, I, I worked with this guy James Forrester, who, you know, he he shot the he shot it on his camera, um, and that's all we. It was just he and I, and we literally spent an hour um, taking doing a bunch of takes, and it's really just two or three pieces because the, the the takes are fully all the way through, um, and then um, and then we just worked together on editing it. Um, you know, and came up with that, you know, yeah. I love, I love the start of it. It reminds me, I was like, I thought it was going to be, I thought we were going to Mario uh, at, at the <laughs> beginning of it, right? Yeah. Um, and I'm kind of watching it. I was just like, oh, where's this going to go to? I was like, this is really neat. <laughs> it's like and a mushroom just, farm or something. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and then it just took off with all this color. And I, as, as somebody, I appreciate visuals. I appreciate like creativity and you know i mean i'm both on like you know like a, a more reserved you know and and you know controlled kind of side as well but when i i love color uh so when color is flooded with me like that i just get really excited yeah. um and you mentioned the dj set so that's solid uh solitary confinement saturdays that you're talking about that's correct um because you've been doing that I, I 
sometimes it was it hasn't been like necessarily every saturday but it was for a bit there it was out like every saturday every second yeah, saturday it's been 12 episodes i've taken i i i took last week off um and i'm taking this week uh, the saturday off because i'm creating a whole new environment um with keyboards and samplers i'm going to make it more like a, an artist performance so i'll be djing and then i'll be playing keyboards and working with samplers and singing live so there'll be a bunch of elements added to it. I've uh, I've watched uh, when you've been been playing, and I'm always so impressed um, with uh, especially electronic artists that really know how to kind of. I guess it's transition from, and I'm going to ask you in a second about physical performances, but from yeah. that physical performance into you know now we're 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 in video and we're doing live or pre-recorded that kind of thing but i'm always so impressed with that creativity uh, and how you're able to translate it to the viewer that really and i don't know if you um have ever seen bright light bright lights uh dj sets he does his whole no. um he does like an 80s kind of takeoff of uh i can't remember the name of the, the movie the two girls at least the goodrow was in it um uh, Romy and Michelle. Oh yeah, 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 yeah. So he does kind of a takeoff of that with um, with DJing, um, but he he's more kind of into the eighties uh, vibe. But the DJ sets I'm watching the you know electronic artists doing, especially when they play as well as DJ, um, are just really really well thought out and just the loss of a stage. Yes, how it it, it is good. But you can still like get so much from these sets that you're doing, um, because I was just listening to those. I was like, this is fantastic. I'm like, <laughs> you, you, I may not be there personally. Yeah. Um, when you're when you're setting that up, I guess is there is there anything like I I know that there is, but like what is it that you look at to say to try to kind of break that barrier a bit? Um, is it the yeah. visuals? Is it the the music setup? Is it both kind of? So I I, I it, I, I spent a lot of time preparing the music um, and my approach is I take almost everything I have. If, if I say, okay, today I'm going to do a circuit party set or today I'm going to do a house music set, vocal house. So I'll have a list of hundreds of songs and I'll start to remove songs I don't want to play. And then I'll put those together and then I start to experiment with which ones should start first. I, the, the, the set is not pre-planned. But the first three songs are pretty much planned. I, 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 want, I want at least the vibe to begin and grow. Um, so I focus on that first. And then from that vibe, I try and create visuals around it. And that, the whole process takes a long time. It takes a few days for me to set that all up. It takes me a day to focus on the music and then a day to focus on the visuals. Because I, if, if, if you notice, I've got, um, I, do, I, I, I have a number of backgrounds and the backgrounds change, and then I have um, dancing characters like unicorns and <laughs> and bears, and you know, I uh, I used to have these muscular circuit men, but then face, but 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 they were muscular, but they were it looked like they were naked without any anatomical parts, but Facebook gave me a warning. <laughs> really? <laughs> and said they said yeah, you, this is nudity. You can't have it. I'm like it's a car it's a cartoon character, and there's no nudity. There's no there. It's actually a gender genderless character um but so I, I i stopped using those types of characters and i just use um uh animals and and cartoons the um, uh the aesthetic, like what you put into it um those whether whether you know like facebook aside and and social media there's so much there's so much worse that they let mm -hmm. through but yeah. um that world that you create that's mm -hmm. in there it literally looks like a team of 50 people are pulling this off. <laughs> wow. Thank you. It, it, is, it's it, me. it is impressive. <laughs> yeah. Well, and that's what, I mean, now that you say that it takes a couple of days to put into that, um, to think it out. Um, and I, I guess that's why trans like translational wise, um, it does come across. So like, it's like you're, it's like you're at a party. Yeah. And, yeah, and I guess, and that's the, what you're going for, I guess. Yeah, 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 yeah. I'm trying to, you know, I, I, ultimately, I'd like it to, I'd like to find a way to merge people into it somehow. I'm, I'm doing some research on how that's, if that's possible. 
you know, if somebody is partying in, at their house and dancing, I want to be able to put them into it. The problem is, uh, you know, the, there's only so much bandwidth. And I'm I started to struggle with the bandwidth at the beginning of my streams because I had so much going on. So um, I had to, you know, upgrade Rogers to, a you know, a, a direct connection to be able to do these. Um, but, uh, but it's interesting you say that because, uh, you know, a couple of weeks ago I was saying to myself, I'm bored. I, I want to do more. <laughs> so that's, you know, that's why I'm kind of, kind of trying to create a little bit more of a, an artist environment as part of the, the set. Um, and then doing more very happy house music, very more. I've been doing a lot of throwbacks and a lot of my friends love it because it takes them back. I think that during this time, a lot of us are reflecting back on our lives, going back and you know thinking about music they used to love and dance to. So I've been doing a lot of that. And I mean, and it works. I, I think yeah. that, you know, you know, from, from somebody who's creating the music, you obviously want to be stimulated too, uh, you yeah. know, to be able to kind of have a good time while you're doing it. Yeah. Yeah. Um, and, and moving in and out of those different kinds of, you know, uh, throwbacks, whether it's, cause you can play a lot with eighties and nineties. You can have yeah. so much fun. Yeah. 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 And, uh, I, I guess, do you have a favorite, like, it's a weird question to ask maybe, and I don't know if anybody's ever asked you this, but do you have a, like a favorite, like when you think about house and I think about back in my university days and what was kind of techno um, yeah, yeah, back yeah. then, right? Um, has, you know, leaps and bounds, we've moved leaps and bounds. Even when you think about early uh, uh, artists like Tiesto and what they were kind of putting out and then you know even in the last 10 years with uh, bands like Swedish House Mafia those are the, the names that have gotten you know a lot of attention but it's the actual underground um, artists that are really driving the the, the music yep. um, and I'm just kind of curious out of like between what house and dub and, and, and various different types if you have favorites or if there's um if there's certain uh, certain genres, subcultures or subgenres, I guess that you think um, are more not easy, but I guess more mainstream friendly, maybe. Yeah. So first of all, I th you know, house music. Um, that when I think of house music, I think of probably the same thing you do because um, back in the you know in the '90s, house music, Sandy B, Make the World Go Round, yeah, Armin Van Helden, Tori Amos, Professional Widow, that kind ah. of. That kind of, yeah. So that type of house music right now is making a big resurgence because, like I said, um, everybody is starting to, you know, no, nobody wants to listen. People don't don't need any more negativity and, and, and you, know, uh, you know, music that's going to put them in a bad mood. Or people don't even want to relate to the times right now. They, they want out of their own heads. And so I'm noticing that house music is more uplifting. It's more... Um, people are looking to rejuvenate themselves. One of my favorite songs right now is Rejuvenate by Lefty. Um, and uh, so, so that, that, that's, that would be my, right now, that, that's my favorite style of music. And that, that's pretty much what I'm, I'm spinning in my radio shows and my weekly. They, um, and, and I, again, going back to that whole throwback and, and thinking, reflection doesn't always have to be about like oh i must sit and and think about you know what i've learned and it doesn't have to be that heavy sometimes it's it yeah. literally is just thinking about you know and uh, to use from from the 90s the 90s yeah it was the 90s <laughs> um an example of every time i hear it and i don't hear it very often but when i do it takes me black back and it's um steal my sunshine from len yeah, uh, yeah, you know yeah. that's that kind of musical reverence. Yeah, that, and uh, Corey just uh, Stuart just yeah. mentioned Electric Circus oh, from Toronto, Electric, right? Yeah, I, I was just going to mention that. Exactly, exactly. Electric that's Circus was such like, I mean, what you're doing is essentially like Electric Circus for the day, except you don't have a whole bunch of people dancing in your studio with you. They're yeah. at home dancing. But we used to watch Electric Circus with those dancers. We didn't know them and, and, and whatnot, but we wanted to hear the music yeah. because, and, and anybody who's watching this, Electric Circus was a, a dance show on Friday nights on Much Music, which is our Canadian MTV. Um, and it was just 
that's where we heard the remixes. That's where we heard these house different versions of, yeah. you know, classic songs. And uh, it was, it was such a great time because it was very, it was, it was so positive. Yeah. Yeah, definitely. Yeah. I remember Barry Harris debuted there. Uh, he debuted uh, Whitney Houston. It's not right, but that's okay. His Thunderpuss remix. Uh, yeah. It's, uh, that was the time I loved it. It was, a uh, you know, uh, uh, Queen Street, uh, was, a, just, you know, just a light that at that point in time uh on those fridays mm -hmm. um talking mainstream for a second because i've always i've always found that when you do have these subcultures um it is so difficult for them to kind of break through even though everyone loves the music and everyone will say like you know it's so good it's so i i, I love that song but it doesn't seem to kind of translate into that mainstream world so much yeah. um and i'm curious from your perspective having you know been involved in this for for a while does it need to is i guess a good question um and if it does what you know how does where does that break come i guess and and what what should we be looking at to try to break through yeah i think true mainstream Music that has longevity has to come from the underground. Um, mm. It did back in those days. Uh, Billie Eilish was not mainstream. If you really listened production-wise to her music, it was very much, it was very electro-pop, uh, dark electro-pop, but it was, it, it, it was, you, know, you could tell it's been, it was done in a home studio. It wasn't meant for mainstream, but it became mainstream because it wasn't meant for mainstream. And that's, I think that's what's going to happen with house music. I hope it would be it would be nice to see because I just think it's been, yeah, it's it's been kind of hidden. Um, mm -hmm. It's yeah. so well known and it is so well loved, but it just doesn't seem to make that transition. And I don't yeah. know if it's just people on the other side who on radio, uh, yeah. not to not to question their abilities, but maybe they just don't know how to I, work with it. Yeah, I think it goes back to our earlier point, which is a lot of LGBTQ plus artists are not getting the chance to be recognized. And they're not getting it. It was always a struggle for me. And even when I had a record deal with, uh, with, with Sony and before that I, I had a deal with Warner, they gave me no support, right? I, I, had, I still had to do everything on my own. I was shocked that they gave me no support that I literally had to funnel in, you know, all of my own resources to make sure that it didn't, you know, that it, that it continued to move forward. But with that said, I said to myself, well, the, you know, I think there is a place here for, uh, you know, for me to use my knowledge of what I've learned, what all the things, of, all the things not to do and all the things to do um, to create um, an LGBTQ plus record label, in inclusive record label. Um, that uh, for basically, you know, the community and allies. So that is something I'm launching very soon. In fact, it, I'm, I was planning to launch it in September. I think I'm going to have to launch it in August because I'm about to sign a, a, one of Toronto's top drag queens uh, as, as an artist. So, um, so, yeah, we're really excited about it. It's called So Fierce Music. So, yeah. I'm so happy to hear you say that. Um, I've found a few around the world um, that I've, you know, connected with. I mean, one of the reasons, I mean, the main reason I started this was because I'm, I was so tired of working around music and not seeing myself, like my community mm -hmm. being represented to the point where it made me question. I was like, I, I'm stupid for even thinking it. I was like, I, but it does this to you. You start to question, it's like, well, maybe we just don't have artists out there maybe we just don't yeah. have them and it's like that's yeah. the most ridiculous thing to ever let into your head yeah yeah um, yeah we're, yeah we're not uh, you know there are we we get so little exposure that and i'm not knocking mainstream pop stars that are fantastic britney gaga madonna uh, rihanna they're all fantastic beyonce they're all amazing and i love them but we are but that's all that we have <laughs> yeah. because they're given all the support. So I'm trying to find avenues and I've got a good team of people that I put together, including uh, my friend and colleague, Corey, um, to, to, to make this a reality, to give us a platform, to give us an opportunity and to actually care about these artists. I will care about nurturing these artists 
to help them, you know, earn a living through merchandise, through radio, through TV and film. I'll, I'll, I'll guide them to help help them find a way to make money on their music. Um, but it, you know, it all it starts with the music, right? The music needs to be it, it needs to be great, um, and um, and the artist needs to have a really uh, a, a good head on their shoulders and and is willing to work hard to yeah really, yeah i mean even even um and i got you know a little not that they ever read it i'm 100 percent sure they never read any message i sent to them or any email i sent to them um because it's it's a it's a non-conversation for them but when uh just speaking from a canadian standpoint when spotify released their you know pride canada canada pride playlist i literally lost my shit i'm like all you have to do is a little bit of googling it doesn't take you very long to know that there's more than the artists of the past and, and god yeah. love katie katie lang and, and yeah. joan armatrading and and and, yeah. and that yeah. you know they are founders um but i'm like there's such a world that's happening but to put that, as like it's so irresponsible to put yeah. that out there and say this is the Canadian queer movement, and it's like got yeah. three people who may be in yeah. the know right now. Yeah, there's you know, Quanta Style is is an amazing Indigenous uh, queer uh, trans artist that uh, you know doesn't get the you know she, she's getting she's got great exposure on her own Instagram, but she deserves wide exposure. We've got uh, some fantastic and talented. Uh, queens on Candace Drag Race, which, which uh, you know, deserve to get a lot of attention um, worldwide, and um, you know that that that's my mission. I, I realize more than ever during this whole quarantine period. Well, two things. One, I, I have uh, you know, I, I like to do visuals. That's the first thing. <laughs> two um, was um, this is what I'm here for to 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 give back and to. Um, to, to help artists get the opportunity or opportunities that uh, that they deserve. Career I think it's, it, it's so important and I, I've said this a few times and you know Corey and I talk all the time. Uh, he's been such a support on my end yeah. and you yeah. know uh, he, he really gets it. but I, I've said you know like we have to kind of start with ourselves because yeah. um, if we wait for the world to do it, it's not going to happen yeah. because that is not a priority for them. And meanwhile, mm -hmm. you have all these fantastic artists that are out there just trying to be heard in some way, shape or form. My kind of side of it is, you know, from education and advocacy standpoint is getting in touch with the youth and, ha you know, those GSAs, those queer communities where youth are hanging out, they need to know about these artists because those kids need to have heroes. They need yeah. to be able to look. They need to yeah. be able to look. You know, if you've got a kid who's sitting there and wants to become a DJ, you're the DJ that sh they, they need to know that you exist. Yeah, yeah. You know, it's, yeah. it's so important. Yeah, yeah. Right now, it, it's um, queer youth have only the option of, only the options of looking at Lady Gaga and Beyonce say, I want to be like that, which is fantastic, right? Yeah. But let's bring some queer artists into this. You know? Yeah, I know, because I mean, it's, it's lovely to say, and again, I, I kind of chirped at Billboard a bit about this. It's, it's great to put up, say, and ask who's your favorite gay icon and have nobody on that list yeah. actually be gay. Like, yeah. as, you know, the closest being yeah. is Katy Perry or Gaga. Yeah. And I'm yeah. like, that's so... I'm like, you have people to choose yeah. from yep. who are iconic in their own, um, in their own way. Yeah. During, Talk to me. Oh, sorry. Go ahead. I'm just going to add one thing. During, during Pride, Pride Month, Toronto, New York, San Francisco in June, um, I thought, well, you know what? I, I could also use a little bit of education and learn a little bit more about our queer history. So I started a, you know, 20, uh, 20 uh, legends and icons uh, of the queer community um series where i just i post a few pictures and talk about their story so i was i was i was shocked at the things i well shocked that i how much i needed to learn about certain people that i didn't know as well as i thought i did and um and and also thought there were certain uh certain icons in in canada that also deserve a little bit of recognition michelle ross michelle mm -hmm. DeBerry, right um alexander wood 
<laughs> yeah. Right. So um, anyway, I did that. I did that. Not only, I did that to share uh, knowledge with people, but also for myself. I, I, I called myself out and said, you know, I, I could uh, take some time and learn a little bit more, and I will continue to learn and and, and try and learn more and more as I as I continue. It's one of the things myself personally I'm going through right now um, is is to be able to grab hold of that history and, and yep. show how we've gotten to kind of to here. Um, yep. the, the steps along the way, the, the missing steps that are often kind of left behind because they're, they're not as well known or people don't want to dig in deeper to mm -hmm. know, especially from the two spirit uh, side of things. It's, yep. it's crazy. Um, Talk to me. It's like because you you've 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 mentioned um, potentially having a, a, a one of Toronto's drag queens on the label in that. To, and I am so and I'm I'm working on it right now. I'm trying to do a, a panel discussion. I'm trying to bring some drag queens together that have been around for a while because uh, I really want to talk to them and you, by all means, weigh in on this about the transition that has happened from drag being just a performance that you kind of like, oh yeah, they're not real singers, to drag being super successful recording artists um, and that whole transition. But there is, there again, these blocks, these walls and these roads of people. I had this conversation with a gentleman and I was talking about Trixie Mattel's last album. And I was just like, oh my God, what a fantastic album. Like, you know, between mm -hmm. the, yeah. the, the country Americana style of it, and it was a well-written, fantastic album. And he came back at me saying, I don't agree with this. This is pastiche to which I had to go look that up. And I didn't, you know, really yeah. understand what he was talking about. And I was like, that's really unfair to say that, you know, this is this is music that was written, recorded. It is good music. Rolling Stone tends to agree with it. But yeah. there is that image, that stigma of drag not being legitimate as a recording artist. It's, it's crazy. It's, it is absolutely crazy. I just had a conversation last night with somebody who was an all-star on RuPaul's Drag Race, um, hopefully adding her to the, uh, to the label. Um, and she had released her latest single herself because, and she has a big drag queen management company, but they're not doing anything for that. They're, they're just, they're, just, they're leaving the music up to the artists. Yeah. So I'm like, wow, they don't really know. People don't, under, I think it's part of it is people don't understand what, what goes, what's involved in a proper release, the distribution channel that needs to be set up properly, the marketing and promotion and the radio that needs to be set up. Spotify promotion. Oh, there's a lot of elements, and and you know it's hard to see a return on that. So I can see why people don't want to do that. Um, but I have a different approach. There's other there's other ways to make money um, mm -hmm. and to to have a career in the music industry that is outside just making money on the actual song. The song is a marketing tool, um, and that's my approach. But in terms of uh, the stigma, I mean it. I think it's going to take some time. I, I, I think part of it has to do with, you know, um, you know America's just not in a good place right now. So right. Um, they're, you know, they're just not going to get the support that they deserve there. Um, well, I mean, first they have to let them on the radio and not just on the TV. Exactly. You know, it's, you yeah. know, it's, it's, it's yeah. just a shame that yeah. uh, I, and I'm sure I, I don't know. I'm not in any boardroom and I'm not in any kind of discussions of things, but I'm sure I can imagine it's kind of yeah. like, well, yeah, they just don't move forward. Yeah. Um, and that is, a, that is the number one part of the, uh, the, the plan with all of my artists is to get them on the radio. And I have, uh, I have two really strong radio promoters that, that I'm working with on the, on the label that, that are going to help, help make that happen. It's interesting because, you know, I mean, radio, and I grew up with radio, if I want to, if I wanted to hear something, I either had to hear it on the radio, and this is even before uh, much music. Much music came along, and I was yeah. just like, oh, my God, finally I have something. <laughs> yeah. um, but you either had, you know, the, the radio, or hopefully they toured, and they mm -hmm. came, you know, through and, and passed you. Um, if you didn't have a Sam the Record Man, an a and HMV yep. wasn't even around at the time, you didn't have access to regular, like, back catalog 
or mm-hmm. anything like that. Yep. Um, so, I mean, we've come a long way and in, into the streaming world, which is, which is great because in one sense, it does get the artists out there uh, a little bit faster, a little bit more. Um, but the deluge of, of music that's coming out is, is hard to kind of like, you know, bob and weave through because there is a, a ton of it. Mm-hmm. Um, with, with looking at like an LGBT label, um, are you thinking strictly, are you thinking specifically Canada or are you opening that up? It's, it's going to be opened up absolutely because um, I, have, uh, I have press set up for North America, uh, for Canada, I have press set up for North America and Europe. So, but you know what, we're, we're going to be inclusive. Um, if there's a fantastic uh, queer uh, artist um, coming out of Japan or out of Asia or Australia, I'm absolutely um, open, of course. What's interesting, yeah, and uh, there's so, you know, there's, there's so many really great artists in areas of the world that won't do anything with them, won't consider them, won't put them, because of it's just that area of the world, that the internet has given them a vehicle to be able to be heard elsewhere yeah. um, without having to fear going out on the street and going to play live yeah. and whatnot. Yeah. Uh, in, in one sense, and then it's great to, you know, for those artists to know that there are outlets around the world, like, like what you're creating, yeah. to be able to have something to feel like they can have like a connection yeah. to the actual industry. Yep. Yeah. The, the, uh, there are, you know, we're living in a pandemic, so there are no live shows. So there, we've got to be creative about the ways that we get music out. TikTok and Instagram are both great ways to um, to 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 get the music out, you know, using influencers or people that mm-hmm. will, that'll be able to push push the track. So those are those are great ways too. Um, on, on the same note with that too, in terms of like creating a, a label, um, I'm sure that you're going to probably get flooded with a lot of artists who don't who don't have the knowledge or the experience the education maybe um, of what to do and how to kind of like, you know, uh, get themselves started, that kind of thing. Are you looking at, you know, that kind of um, element as well, where you would, you may have somebody who kind of walks, not, walk, not necessarily walks in out the street, but you get an email, that kind of thing, and wants to kind of sit down with you and, and talk about this, but they, you know, they have a voice, you know that there's a, the ability there. Are you looking at, um, I guess, helping them grow in that capacity. Absolutely, if there's a willingness on both sides, absolutely. Um, you know, we, we were also set up as a services company, so there'll be a production side of that. Yeah. We've got a great team of people together, including myself, songwriters, producers, um, uh, and uh, engineers and all that to, to, make this, to make the track you know, sound great if it's not already at that level. Um, so that, that option is there too. Um, Yes. They are they are learning, um, yeah. and you know I often have said that the the bedroom artist and people get get yes. down on it and, and and knock the bedroom artist. And I'm like, well, more than likely they don't have anywhere else to be other than their bedroom. They don't have <laughs> the funds. They don't have the knowledge. They don't have the connection to a studio that maybe they can afford or whatnot. But they do have access to software, and they may be writing at home. So let's not like let's not knock them too hard, you know, because yeah. they are creating little gems uh, a lot of the times that yeah. can oh, yeah. grow yep. in, into something more. Yeah. You know, and there's also room for collaboration. I have, you know, you know, ultimately, uh, you know, when I, when I first moved back to Toronto, I, I wanted to, and I still want to create a songwriting reality show and contest. Um, one that is not about elimination every week. And, you know, it's, it's, and one that is not about tying an artist, tying a, a really talented songwriter to a to a pop star that's already has enough songs, you know, that she doesn't need to be finding more. Um, it's about finding the next Alanis Morissette, the next, uh, you know, uh, you know, uh, Prince. Yeah. So, so um, you know, one of the things I thought about is like there's going to be all sorts of different types of artists that would. Uh, want to be a part of that in this case with the label they probably you know i have no problem tying together a, a, a country artist with a hip-hop artist put them together and see what happens 
you know, I'm, I'm really excited to be able to, you know, to see what, what kind of, what things can come, uh, what, what can actually be created in that sort of environment. I love the idea. And I had, uh, I can't remember whose live it was that we were talking uh, about, or actually it was, uh, I did a Zoom recording on, it's on my YouTube with TYB, who's a hip hop pop kind of artist in uh, Wisconsin. And I had asked him about that, about I really like cross genre collaborations. I love yep. it when artists kind of get together and, you know, even though you may, and country's a really great uh, uh, example because especially with queer country, queer country is yep. really kind of coming out. Yep. Um, yep. You know, even before, God love you, Orville, even before you, <laughs> there was yep. queer country. Yep. Um, but, <laughs> You know, it's it's interesting to see that cross genre matchup and what can kind of evolve out of it. There are sounds that come out from those kinds of collaborations that we don't expect to see, but are like magic. Oh, absolutely! Yeah, I could just think about the collaborations between, uh, you know, I mean, for years we've been, you know, collaborating, uh, you know, uh, hip hop with with uh, uh, with pop me or hip hop yeah. with like EDM. Yeah. I mean that's worked really well. You know, let's let's see what the possibilities are. Like, let's have no 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 borders, no boundaries. That goes back to kind of like, and I and I mentioned this before, where um, uh, Lincoln Park and Jay Z uh, when they recorded um, Encore and Numb, and you know that was kind of one of those first collaborations that people had ever heard alternative rock and and rap kind mm -hmm. of come together and create something brand new um, and it shows that it works that you don't, you don't have to be in these, you know, you don't have to be tunnel vision with the music. You don't have to stay in these lanes. You can kind of cross over. And EDM is such a great transitional thing because you can have orchestral, yeah. you can have like yeah. the dream and, and the euphoric sounds that can work in any kind of genre. Yep. I agree. I agree. You know, trance, progressive house, that, that, that's sort of what EDM I think came from is trance and progressive house put together, um, you know, or it could go into an electro uh, vibe. I'm trying to combine electro house and progressive house and, and teenage dreamer as an example. So, well, yeah, and and yeah. Well, and to go back to that, yeah. uh, <laughs> 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 having a song. Sorry, right? to lead you. <laughs> <laughs> Listen, we, I am I am I am king of the yeah, tangents. I can go in so many directions. It. I love it. Um, but like, it's, it's, so for you, um, and being that electro artist, it's interesting. It's like, what, where would you like to see? What kind of sounds have you or haven't you, I guess, brought in that you'd like to? You're like, ah, I'd really like to kind of get a hold of that nugget of sound. And um, so I, the, I'm already working on the next stuff, right? And and the next single's almost done anyway. Um, and it's, it's going to have pianos in it. It's going to have a piano house, piano house sounds. Um, I really want to be able to take those pianos and morph them very much like, um, John Legend, uh, his song Heartbreaker that he did with Matt, Master, was it, uh, Mastercraft? Mastercraft. I think so. Yeah. I think so. Yeah. Yeah. And the piano goes, dong, 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 like that. I basically those are the types of things that I'd like to be able to do. So based in, in my head, that's Electro House. So that's Electro House mixed with house, put together. So- And I mean, it's kind of nice with like, and, and to mention John Legend, because like there's a really good example of an artist that's, it's unexpected. Yeah. Um, and people love to box people in, we all yeah. know this. Yeah. Um, but it's really cool when you see, and you see a different side yeah. of an artist because as you can, you know, appreciate yourself as being somebody who's creating music. Yeah. From from a technical standpoint and, and technological standpoint, you know that the boundaries are really limitless. Yeah. Um, yeah. It's just about what you can kind of try yeah. and create. Totally. And you know what? We're living in a in a time when our attention span is so short. I mean, TikTok videos are what five six seconds. <laughs> I don't <laughs> I mean, know. I tried seconds. TikTok. I have not been successful with the TikTok. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. I, I I have two videos on TikTok. That's it. I, and and the first one was me doing a drag, going, "I don't care if the sun don't shine, <laughs> I get my loving in the evening time." <laughs> so I was just doing drag. I'm gonna do drag and makeup and weird stuff on there. But so so our attention span is so short. So I'm like, you know what? I'm not gonna put out an. I'm not going to just 
release an album. I have an album worth of material that I'm working working on, but I'm not just going to drop an album. Um, that's for the Taylor Swifts of the world, and, and let them do that because that that works for them. For me, I'm putting a single out every couple of months, and then after I've done six or eight singles, then I'll drop an album with those singles included in there. Um, oh. But every one of those singles is going to sound different, and it's whatever I'm feeling. If, if there might be a time when I'm feeling like a completely a minimalistic piano with a small beat in the background and the with a dark vocal might be that you know it's it's uh it's it's the beauty of the world that we're in right now in terms of streams and tracks um not everybody feels the pressure to just do a full album maybe it's an ep your ep can be three songs it could be five songs maybe yeah. six they yeah. can be just a collection of of singles that you've kind of put out or tracks you put out yeah. um it's kind of opened up quite a bit for yeah. what the yeah. art it used to be so rigid um it's like i'm putting out an album first there will be a single and a, very, a video with that and then there'll be another yeah. single when the album releases and it goes like that yeah. um and now it's just like yeah put it into a blender press yeah. the puree and yeah. watch it go i'm just gonna you know i may just i may one day say you know what i'm i'm bored i'm gonna drop a single today <laughs> and just put a put a track out you know i may do that at some point um you know but I, th I think that's the way to do it because, you know, I'm not trying to make, I, I'm trying, basically trying to go over the combination of how I'm feeling right now and what I think would help the rest of the world, you know. I think we're, I, I, and, and I think, you know, the more I talk to, I think our community specifically really gets it. I think that what has happened, you know, with the Black Lives Movement has, you know, helped increase that. I just think that, Right now, more and more of the oh, world. If I could just jump, Davy yeah. Jane just joined. She's uh, one. Of, she's an up, up and coming artist that also signed to the label. Hi, ah. Davy. <laughs> so look for her. So that that that's uh, we're working on a really solid track called "Damaged Goods." It's it's hot. <laughs> I am. I'm going to go and uh, creep yeah. afterwards. <laughs> yeah, yeah. It, it'll be the first single she's released. So awesome. it'll be brand new. Um, but yeah, like, I, I think right. that our community kind of gets it. And I think that we, you know, I think we want to see change. And I, I think that for yourself, people like myself, knowing that there's younger people kind of coming, it's, it's kind of up to us to kind of like, put the, the, the vehicles in motion, put the mechanisms in place, Absolutely. so that they will be able to come along afterwards and yep. not have to deal with some of the bullshit that you know, um, we've seen. I would, I would love nothing more than, than, than for, to, for, to be able to do that for, to help people along their, their journey like that way and, you know, and share my, my experiences, but help guide them for, for success. There's a lot of things I did that didn't work and I spent a lot of money in the wrong places. Um, worked with the wrong people, a lot of, lot of wrong people. And I just wanna make sure that you know, people don't make those mistakes. Life is education, right? Yeah. Um, you you learn, you never stop learning, and then yes. you pass on that knowledge so that people don't have to kind of go through what you had to go through, yeah. or or can bypass some of the the challenges that you've seen, so that yeah. they can at least deal with the other challenges that they're going to and not be exactly. caught up in too many. Yeah, yeah, they'll have their own challenges, and they'll they'll be big ones. You know? I'm I'm excited. Uh, it, it does it really because I mean you don't. And I've been scouring Canada um, and just kind of getting out there and, and I have a book and I'm keeping track of the artists that I find yeah. simply because I know that they're not being, in, you know, represented uh, out there very much. They're not being heard. They're not being seen in, in our country. Um, it's a little bit easier because even though we're smaller, there's still a lot of artists. Yeah. Um, yeah. But I think maybe it's a little bit easier to maybe be a little louder. Mm -hmm. uh, for them in our country yep. in the united states it's a it's a lot harder because it's so big yeah um but yep. in at least in our country trying to kind of keep track of those artists and knowing that you know there's going to be outlets like yours to be able to direct artists to and let them know that they exist because they can just be so yeah. lost and yeah. feel like there is no help out there you know i wish for a world where i didn't i wouldn't have to call it an lgbtq inclusive label. oh i know i wish I, I dream of a world like that but we're not anywhere near that 
we need to be loud and we need to to um, we, we need to let people know that we're here right it's the only way it's the only way we're going to get the attention that we need the other side of it is and i've had this conversation so, too um where i know that some artists they want to be known for their music and i 100 percent agree that they should never have to sacrifice their music because of who they are um, but the other side of it is right now we haven't gotten to that point and visibility is important and representation is important. Uh, and if you are an artist that is, you know, and I'm so happy to see so many artists out there being themselves and being, they're not coming out in press releases. They're just, we're never in, um, and mm, yeah. feel comfortable and confident to, to lead with that. Um, but at the same time, they, they still need to, June is great. It's great when there's pride in June and in our yeah. country, we have pride in July too, yeah. but it is 360, 365 days a year and they should yeah. have opportunities 365 days a year, just like exactly. everybody else. Exactly. Yeah. Ah, uh, that's me. That's my torch. <laughs> 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 I, I I wave the flag. I wave the torch quite a bit. Yeah, yeah. Um, yeah. But I think it, it. Like I said, I think it's a conversation that it can't just be like one and done. It always has to kind of be brought up until you get to that point. Um, you know, I I as being somebody who's white in our country, I have to think about two spirit. I have to think about indigenous. I have to think about our our, our trans and our black uh, community members as as well as just the LGBT as a as a whole um, because. We're not there yet, so yeah. we have to, and we have to kind of keep them in. So it's, yeah, Absolutely. it's awesome that these these outlets like yourself is are coming along. Yeah, yeah. What? So you've said now um, you're gonna like release like a single every couple of months, maybe that kind of thing, or once a month, yeah. yep. um, as you feel. Um, and it's this is a hard question to ask because we don't know what's going to happen to the world. Um, you, as I see it, you're probably going to continue the Saturday or as you, you know, feel comfortable with them. Uh, but I know our country is turning around a little bit. I know at least in the Atlantic region we are. Um, when you get back out and you get a chance to play, um, what, what should people expect? That's a tough question because we don't yeah. know what, what will be. I think things will never go back to the way they were. Yeah. Um, I think, I think at least again, if I'm thinking the, the foreseeable future, so let's say in the next couple of years, for the next couple of years, you know, I can see a concert being socially distant. The socially distancing will be, social distancing will be enforced. Mm -hmm. um, wearing a mask will be enforced. Um, you know, I, I mean, I can see how people are getting, I, I, I'm, I've been out on a patio and I've had, I've had dinner with some friends in a socially di social distanced environment, um, you know, and I can tell that some people have forgotten yeah. that, that we're still going through a pandemic. So I'm reluctant to do that very often anymore. Um, um, so I think that I think I think what's going to happen is we're probably going to have another wave, and people are it's going to be we're going to get hit hard, and it's going to last through the winter. Um, so when once we do finally get a vaccine, I think it's going to take about a year, or two years for people to be comfortable again without social distancing, without a mask. I think that that's where we're headed, unfortunately. Things are never. Things are just not going to go back to the way they were. I, I and I, I, I agree with you. I, I, I see that happening. I, 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 I think what's gone is uh, for the foreseeable future is that standard grouping yep. kind of thing. So, but yeah. you know what? We're creative. Yep. We will. We will make more magic happen in a different kind of way. Yeah, absolutely. We're creative. We, we're, we're finding ways to stay entertained um you know some some of toronto's uh top drag queens are doing curbside uh shows um trying to enforce social distancing um that way but still entertaining people in a, in a safe environment um i i wasn't able to attend the the drive-in drag show but that i i saw video clips of it and uh, heard about it with uh, with safonda cox um 
and uh, misconception. And I, so th those are ways to entertain that I think, uh, you know, people are, are moving towards. We, you know what, we might, we might just go back to the 60s and have those drive-in the drive theaters for concerts and, 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 and shows and DJ, DJ gigs and EDM parties. That could be a completely yeah. different, yeah. I exciting world. Yeah, yeah. This thing is probably going to kick us off soon because it only ever gives us an hour. So, okay. so you're not cut off. I'm going to say thank you. Yeah. Uh, for joining me on here. I sure. I would like to continue this conversation at some point yeah. off of here. I think Absolutely. that I there's, there's a lot to discuss. Yeah. Um, but for anybody who's watching, yeah. this is Velvet Coat. The song is out today. It is called Teenage Dreamer. You need to go and find it and stream it and share it and give it to all your friends and the people on the street. Dance to it. Maybe film yourself dancing to it and post it up online and tag the gentleman in it so he can see you dancing to it. Um, you need to check out the video for it because the video is fantastic. And follow Velvet Code because uh, when he's doing his DJs sets, uh, the uh, uh, Solitary Confinement Saturdays, um, you need to check those out because they're so much fun. Awesome. Thank you. Thank you. Um, this is, I'm going to return you to your life yep. in, right. in beautiful Toronto. I think that's where you are yep. right now. Yeah. Uh, and have a fantastic weekend. All right. Thanks. You too. And Thank congratulations. You for having me. Yes. Thank you. And congratulations yes. on, the, on the release today. Thank you. Mwah. Mwah. Right. Take care. See you. Bye.